from the Tie Cats Audio Network. This is Tie Cats Today with Braden Neville. On today's episode of Tie Cats Today, we hear from two of the latest re signings Richard Leonard, as he discusses entering his seventh season as a Tie Cat, and Terry Godwin looks to build off a strong season with the Cats. It's Tuesday, February 13th, 2024, and this is Tie Cats Today. Free agency in the CFL is underway. Several guys around the league have been moving around already. I'll keep you posted through the week as players sign in Hamilton and announcements get made official. But two players will be staying put are Rich Leonard and receiver Terry Godwin, who are both coming off very impressive campaigns in the CFL. Terry Godwin, of course, had his first full season in the league, finishing with 68 receptions, 864 receiving yards, and six touchdowns, which was good enough for seventh in the league and really was a threat for the Ticats on the offense all season long. Rich Leonard also had himself another all-star caliber season with 48 tackles, three picks, one sack, all while being one of those PFF darlings that they love to shine light on every single week. And he spoke to me about re-signing for his seventh season in Hamilton. All right, joining me now is Ticats DB Richard Leonard. Rich Congrats on re-signing with the Cats. Why did you feel it was important to, to get the deal done and stay here in the hammer? I just got to say, I just love Hamilton. It's, it's just a perfect place, a perfect fit for me. So that was just a no-brainer for me, like just to come back and just produce for the team and help the young guys out and, you know, just be a, a veteran voice. Do you feel as though now you're going to be entering, I believe, your seventh season with the Ticats or... Do you feel as though you're becoming more and more each year of a leader and that that voice to those younger players? I do feel that way. Um, it really caught me off guard last year where a lot of young guys was just calling me OG. And, you know, I just took that name and, you know, just ran. So I know, like, they look up to me. So that just I just try to do everything, like, to teach them the game if they need help or whatever they need help for, I just try to be there. Do you feel like you're the OG, or do you still feel like you're you're young, you're 22 years old, still coming into the league, Rich? Man, I feel young, but, you know, an OG, I look at time and how fast the years go by, and you see a lot of young faces, and, you know, sometimes you just realize, like, yeah, you're the older guy now. You you could tell last season you were, like you always are, but you were you were incredible last year and, and definitely in conversations to be an all-star. What did you feel it was about last season that, that really puts you over the edge and, and continued that strong play you've had over all these years? Uh, just um, understanding the game more, um, understanding the defense, knowing what I can do, what I can't do, and, you know, just playing with the guys next to me. Whatever their weakness is, I try to make it a strength, and whatever my weakness is, I try to, you know, they want to make it a strength. So, you know, we just always work together, and it was just fun playing with the young guys. You know, even I'm learning from them too, you know. Yeah things from them so you know it's always good to play with you know the young guys coach Washington will be the defensive coordinator what's the relationship like with him that you've built over these years yeah he's like a um how can I say like a father to me like, mm-hmm. you know I can come to him anytime and like you know talk about anything about life football whatever it is like I know I could come to him and talk to him and you know he'll keep it keep it real with me and then a new head coach, Scott Milanovic. Are you excited to get to work with Scott and have him on as the as the man leading the charge there? I love Scott, man. You know, we we ain't really have too much. Talk, we never talk that much, but just seeing him like in the hallway and stuff, he's like a competitive guy. You know, I love that type of. I love that from a coach. What's this process like, Rich? When you're going through free agency, you finish the season, but what's that process like from the end of your last game in the playoffs to? to signing a new deal here? Oh, uh, it was rough at first because, you know, you like I always want to stay in Hamilton and you just hope oh, like it wasn't gonna happen. So me just sitting and waiting and waiting, it was kinda like, you know, tough for me. But I'm just happy that we got the deal done. You're gonna have a new D B coach, Brandon Isaac. What's it like to get that fresh perspective to have a new guy come in and maybe show you something you haven't seen before or, or have a fresh set of eyes on your game? It's always good to have a uh, fresh face, you know. He, um, you know, he see, he probably has seen some things that I need to work on, and you know, I could take it from him, and you know, we just go learn from each other. And I want to talk a little bit about a guy who broke out on that secondary last season, Stavros Katzentonis. Was that a guy that over the years you've kind of 
almost took under your wing and, and talked to throughout his growth as a player? Man, Stabo was here, uh, I want to say his first year was 2020, what, 2022? Yeah. I wasn't here, so he had um some other, he had the other veteran guards. So when I first came in, I was able to, like, you know, talk to him and chat with him. Like, he's like a brother to me. Like, we do everything together. Like, we, we work out together. We go do treatment together. You know, we do a lot together. So just having him out there, I love it. Rich, it feels like you're a guy who can play anywhere, like on that secondary. Is Are you comfortable no matter where you are, where you're placed, whether it's at half or wherever that may be? Yeah, I'm a DB, so wherever they put me, you know, I might have a little, you know, struggle at first, but once I learn it, it'll be, you know, I'll be all right. But I'm a DB, so you can put me anywhere, and I'm going to just stand out. In my opinion, I think playing DB in the CFL might be one of the, if not the hardest position, just based on the waggle and everything else. And for those young guys coming in, what kind of advice do you give those guys in training camp that are coming from the States that, that haven't seen that before, the waggle or, or, or the different the way it's played in this Canadian game compared to the American game? Uh, how can I change them? <laughs> <laughs> it's no, it's boy. easier said than done. I would just say, like, you need, like, experience. You need you need the time to be out there so you can understand, like, the waggle, how fast, like, guys go. Like, some people go fast when they run in go route. Some people run slow when they run in, like, intermediate route. So it's like, mm -hmm. what, understand the game and you look at film and watch your opponent. You know, you get better like that. One thing I envy about you, Rich, is you're spending the offseason in Florida. What's the what's the training like out there back home? What what are you up to to get ready for this next season? I train, man. I train almost all day. To be honest, like I have a trainer that lives probably like ten minutes from my house. So it's like we are train in the morning. I come home and rest, and then go back and train again. Like that's just that's just me. That's, I just train all day just to get better. So when we in the um, playoffs in the fourth quarter. I'm ready for whatever happens. Uh, aside from football, what are you doing for fun? What are you doing in your downtime during the off season, Rich? Um, I'm with family. I got um, four kids, so you know I spend a lot of time being in daddy mode. You know, taking the kids to school, <laughs> doing little things with them. Um, what else? I do. I train, um, and like you know, spend time with family as much as I can. And so I'm home. What's it like living in Florida, like in, in Southern? And it must be nice training wise because you can play on turf still. You can, you can, you know, you can be out on the field. The training must, it must be better to do that there than it is, say, in snowy Hamilton during February. It's beautiful out here. Like, it's, you know, <laughs> we're always to train that. Like, we have everything. We got hills. If you want to train up the hill, we got sand, we got turf. We got whatever you need, and it's, and then, like, you don't have to really worry about the weather too much because yeah. it's always beautiful out here, so it's always something to do. Coming back for training camp, how much of a difference does it make to have a full training camp with Scott? And I, I know it's different because he came in on offense, but, but what's this training camp going to look like? It's pro probably going to be new for you, a different perspective. Yeah, it's definitely going to be new because I've been with Coach O for a while, so, you know, mm -hmm. It's going to be a different voice, so it's like, it's just like I'm going to be a new guy, like just to trying to learn and see how Scotty is as a coach and, you know, just be a great player, great, a great mentor to the players. Yeah. Have you been one of those guys keeping an eye on Twitter throughout this whole free agency process? We don't have to get into any names or specifics, but have you been keeping an eye out or are you paying attention to that at all? I'm paying attention to the team. I'm going to see what we bring in, man, because – this the year I feel like it's the year that we have to break the break it break the the need to get into the great cup for real. Well, Rich, I'll leave it at that. That's perfectly said, and that's exactly what I think people want to hear. Uh it's great catching up with you. We'll see you back here at training camp. And once again, dude, congratulations on the new deal. Thank you. Nice talking to you. That was Rich Leonard. Good to see him back on the Ticat secondary. On the other side of the ball, Terry Godwin will look to build off his impressive campaign, his first full season in the CFL, and he spoke to me about the expectations for next season. All right, joining me now is Terry Godwin, fresh off re-signing with the Ticats. Terry, how does it feel to know you'll be sticking around in the hammer for another season? I mean, it feels amazing. I mean, come back playing in front of amazing fans and in the inside of an amazing stadium. 
And, you know, just being able to be back in the hammer, it, it, you can't get a better feeling than that. Last year, you were able to have a very successful year. You were close to 1,000 yards receiving. What was it about last season that made you really catch your stride here? I mean, just the team coming together as a camaraderie. I mean, from the jump, you know, we was a little shaky. And, I mean, once we got going and got comfortable and everybody got, you know, put not put in the right position, but everybody got in their position and was stuck there, I mean, we couldn't do nothing but go up from there. I mean, we had the mistakes early on in the season, and we, fit, we figured out the wrinkles, and, and we, you know, we kind of got on the roll towards the end. Do you think next year th there's a good chance that we could see Terry Godwin hitting 1,000 yards receiving? I do, but do you? Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. For and sure. I, want, I want to talk a bit about last season and, and Scott Milanovic and getting to work with him. He'll now be your head coach, but what does Scott bring to a team? I mean, he just brings a professionalism you know mm -hmm. i mean he handled himself like professional like you're supposed to and that's what he demands out of his player out of his players and i mean just having that that kind of mindset in this type of game i mean you need that and he's also you know a reliable coach you can go in there and ask him questions whenever you need to and he's going to shoot you straight forward i mean he's not going to sugarcoat anything and i mean hey some people that kind of rub them the wrong way if you're not used to that type of coaching <laughs> but i mean Hey, he works out for the best, and he, he's had a lot of great accomplishments in his past. I mean, we can only look up from here. How much of a difference can it make to have him now running the offense through a full training camp? He wasn't the offensive coordinator during training camp last year, but how much of a difference do you think that can make? I mean, it's going to make a tremendous difference because now he gets to implement his, his, you know, his terminology, his plays, and just to start from scratch with him. So, I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be a big turnaround and a tremendous effect for him. How was the process in you getting this deal done and, and returning here to Hamilton? How was that process in dealing with the new GM, Ed Hervey? <laughs> I mean, Ed was a little bit there throughout, you know, my time being there in the first yeah. couple of seasons. So, I mean, me and Ed has been, had a kind of relationship before. And the whole process, you know, it's just always a waiting game, you know. Everyone's itching to figure out, even the players, where they're going to go, if they're going to stay at home, such and such. And I mean, <laughs> just for my luck to be able to stay where I came in at, I mean, it's nothing but blessings, and I can't appreciate them much for much more. There's going to be two quarterbacks returning next year that you played with last season. The first one I want to talk about is obviously Bo Levi Mitchell. He'll be back, but what's it like working with Bo every day and, and having a veteran presence like him around? Veterans like that who's been in certain situations. He's been in uh, multiple great cups. So, I mean, mm -hmm. just to learn from him as a quarterback perspective, to me as a receiver, I mean, it's, it's nothing but up from there. And then just having him at practice, you know, he can dial in those little details, let you know what he wants or, you know, what to get you open throughout the year. So, I mean, just having those type of things and him to note there, I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing to have him back there. Does his experience really show when he talks to you? Like a guy who's done as much as he does, can you really tell, like, how much and how accomplished he is just by talking to him? Oh, of course. I mean, he's not going to, like, when he talks to you, he's going to talk to you like he's your teammate. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, but he's still going to have that kind of coaching mentality because he is the veteran. You get what I'm saying? He's been there. He's been, done that. So, I mean, just for him to be able to, to talk to us on that type of level and get us to understand his, his train of thoughts, I mean, you can't ask for a better quarterback than that. I want to talk about the other quarterback, Taylor Powell. You got to play with him a lot. <laughs> a young guy, kind of the opposite, you know what I mean? A rookie last year. But yeah. what did you see from him playing with him and catching with him in his first year in the CFL? Oh, man, I mean, seeing him foul get back there, I seen nothing with sparks, you mean? I mean, uh, just to see him back there get comfortable throughout the season when his time was, when his number was called and the consecutive games that he did play, I mean, you seen nothing but progression um, from the time he started to the time he got out of there. I mean, yes, he was a rookie, but as y'all can see, he didn't play like a rookie. And, mm -hmm. I mean, that means that's, that's a tremendous statement to say, you get what I'm saying? And yeah. just to see him coming back and – it's only it, I, I can't do nothing but smile because I can only <laughs> see the upside that he's gonna bring, and then yeah. the joy and the player that he is. I mean, you can't ask for a better player in the locker room than him. The one guy I want to ask you about on your receiving core with you that's that's a young guy in the league, but keeps making strides each year is Keandre Smith. But is he a guy you can see making even more of a jump for next season? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, just me being there a little bit in twenty twenty two. And then, so 2023, he made a tremendous jump. And just just for me to be there to see that stride that he's made, 
I mean, I can do nothing but be happy for him and be uh, nothing but smiles. And just to see what he's be able to be there next year, to see what the next stride is going to be, I mean, I'm I'm excited for him because he's a guy that came in, made plays when we need him to, and uh, he, t- he turned a lot of eyes towards him this year. You're going to have a new receiving coach, a, a guy coming – uh, with a lot of experience, he played in Saskatchewan, had several thousand yard receiving seasons. How much of a impact and help can that have on a receiver to have a guy who's been in the league and, and had those seasons to come help out? I mean, it's a big impact because now he's a guy that can actually tell you how to do it. He's done it. He's mm-hmm. been there. So it's not just someone who's only coached the sport or coached the position. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. he knows how, what, what to expect. He knows what type of defense has got to be played. And he knows the the ins and outs of getting open in the league, so I mean it's gonna it's gonna help a lot to to have someone like that along your side coaching you. Yeah, looking at his career stats is definitely gonna be a big impact. Where are you spending the off season? Are you in Georgia? I'm in Georgia. I'm in okay, Georgia. okay. So how's the training been? How's it been being back home now for the last several months? Oh, it's been good. It's been good. The training has picked up a lot the mm-hmm. last I say month or so. So the training's going good, and being home is great. I mean, I get to see the family. Get to spend time with my dog and my nephew. So I mean, it's it's going great. What kind of dog do you got, Terry? I have a bull actually. He he he's <laughs> upstairs right now. He used to come down here and mess with me, but he can give me a little <laughs> privacy right now. <laughs> what, what do you? So in in the downtime, Terry, when you're in Georgia, you're in the pretty nice weather. You're not dealing with these exactly. Canadian winters. But what are you doing for fun? Actually, for fun, I, me, I'm a video game guy. Yeah, play Call of Duty. But if not, I'm hanging around with my friends, my family, and just enjoying the time being back. You know what I'm saying? Uh, mm-hmm. Throughout sports, we, throughout football, we don't get a chance to really be at home that much. So when I do get a chance or have a little free time or downtime, I can hang out with the family. How is it being without uh, Omar Bayless? Are you feeling sad? Do you miss him? Or? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's my guy. So funny thing is, we call each other every week. We, we yeah. they, You know, we call him. We're going to check in. So that's my guy. We're going to always stay in touch. But and just, not, just not being able to be with him physically, I mean, you know, it took a little toll getting used to the first time. But we're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, I I think throughout the season, one of the most popular things was the ongoing Madden rivalry between Omar <laughs> Bayless and Terry Godwin. Are you guys still <laughs> connecting online and, and getting in those intense battles? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So he actually beat me, I want to say, twice not too long ago. And I okay. kind of got upset, and I got my cousin to play. I was like, I got somebody to play you. So I got a get back right there. But yeah. I'm going to have to, I'm gonna have to go back and practice some more. That's amazing. No, I can't wait to to hear more about that, because that was one of the funniest things, of seeing you two talk about <laughs> that. But but the bromance was real there, man. Oh, yeah. I, 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 about the, the rest of this offseason, a couple months left, training's kind of vamped up. But what are you working towards? What are you? Do you have any goals for next season to, to maybe improve in? Honestly, my goal is for next season just to come out there and show the CFL that I'm the best receiver there is. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. My hard work is going to show. And the yeah. Tiger has a, not, a, not a team to be played with this year. And just me personally, I'm just going to go out there and do my thing. And last year, I, you know, first full season, I almost had 1,000 yards. The goal is to get 1,000 and more and mm-hmm. also to help my team win. Well, Terry, I'm going to leave it at that, man. I'm sure Ticats fans are very excited to see you back. I'm excited to see you now re-sign with the team. And we'll see you in a couple months come May and training camp, and it'll be all fun and games. So once again, thanks a lot, Terry Godwin. Yes, sir. Thank you.